Good evening and welcome to the 9 p.m. special broadcast here on Vion. I'm Aisha Sindhu. The big story we're tracking tonight. Just yesterday, Palestine's envoy to Pakistan was seen sharing the stage with none other than the global terrorist Hafiz Saeed. Today, India lodged protest over the meeting. Palestine acted swiftly, first by issuing an apology, which was released by the Indian Ministry of External Affairs. It said, quote, the Palestinian side has conveyed deep regrets over the incident and assured the government of India that they are taking serious cognizance of their ambassador's presence at this event. They have said that they will deal with this matter appropriately. It was also conveyed that Palestine highly values its relationship with India and stands with us in the war against terrorism and will not engage with those who commit acts of terror against India." End quote. Less than an hour later, Palestine announced that it was recalling its ambassador to Pakistan, Walid Abu Ali. The decision was confirmed by Palestine's ambassador to India, Adnan Abu al Haija. But he added that his colleague in Pakistan wasn't aware of who Hafiz Saeed was. Know him till he starts speaking. When he starts speaking, he asks who is this person. They told him this blah, blah, blah. And our ambassador's speech was after him. He made his speech and left. Now for us, uh, even with that, it's not accepted. And for that, the, uh, the decision has been taken from my government. However, Weon has access proof that runs counter to Mr. Hija's statement. On your screens right now is a video from December 14th. It shows the Palestinian ambassador to Pakistan meeting with Hafiz Saeed. In fact, the caption to this video clearly states that that meeting was between him and quote unquote Professor Saeed and other political and religious leaders who were attending a Defayate Pakistan Council conference on Jerusalem. Clearly, the Palestinian ambassador to Pakistan is not new to Mr. Saeed. He's met him before and met him again on Friday. And joining me this evening to talk more about this developing story from Delhi is Ambassador Pinak Ranjan Chakravarti. He's the former Deputy Ambassador to Israel and a distinguished fellow at the Observer Research Foundation, former Secretary of the MEA as well from Tel Aviv in Israel. Arsen Ostrovsky is joining us. He's an international human rights lawyer and political analyst from Washington. Ray Locker the national security editor for the USA Today. And from Islamabad, we on the Pakistan bureau chief, Taha Siddiqui, joins us on the conversation. Good evening, gentlemen. Thank you all for uh, speaking with us uh, this evening. Ambassador, uh, can I come to you first? Is this apology issued by Palestine and its decision to recall uh, its ambassador, its envoy in Pakistan back to Palestine adequate given the circumstances? Well, in my view, it should be adequate because I think India has gone by the book and uh, made representations to the Palestinian government and objected to this kind of uh, participation by their ambassador with, uh, with a very well-known terrorist. And uh, so I think this, is, this should be adequate and, should, and I think India would probably uh, set it aside now that the fact that... Uh, uh, the ambassador has also been recalled. So I think this is enough for the moment. Uh, but Ambassador, if I can ask you, um, you know, th this reaction has come in regarding yesterday's meeting that uh, the rally that uh, the Palestinian ambassador attended. But since then, we've been able to access footage of uh, the very same gentleman, Mr. Ali, um, sharing uh, once again an evening with Hafiz Saeed and other political and religious leaders in Pakistan. And the fact is that the Palestinian ambassador to India today said that he didn't even know who Hafiz Saeed was. But uh, how, do we, how do we digest this uh, new information that's come out? I am quite convinced that uh, the Palestinian ambassador in Islamabad knew very well who he was meeting. I think Hafiz Saeed is not a under underground kind of a person where he's on television every day. He uh, holds huge rallies. The whole world knows about him. There's a huge amount of uh, uh, propaganda that he does in Pakistan. And I think the Palestinian ambassador there could have fallen for some suggestions from the, the, the patrons of Hafiz Saeed 
that uh, it would be a good idea for him to. And then, of course, uh, it was all about Palestine and Jerusalem and, and the issues that, uh, that uh, obviously uh, have some emotive content. So I think uh, the Palestinian ambassador knew very well that he was meeting Hafiz Saeed. I can't imagine that an ambassador uh, did not know what he was doing. So I don't buy the argument uh, trotted out by the Palestinian ambassador in Delhi. Absolutely. In fact, uh, we've also accessed a report that says that uh, uh, Mr. Ali was also at another event uh, about three years ago, which was uh, once again helmed by Hafiz Said. But we leave that aside for a moment. Arsen Ostrovsky, how exactly is Israel viewing these developments as far as India and Palestine go? Um, look, I don't think uh, you'll be getting any official statement from the Israelis, but of course there is an element of uh, concern here. From Israel's perspective, a terrorist is a terrorist, whether it's uh, Hafiz Said or whether it's a terrorist in Hamas. Um, we know that Said is a mastermind of the Mumbai attacks and many other attacks against um, against Indian people. We know the rally was organized by the Defense Pakistan Council. Uh, which is a notorious conglomerate of uh, extremist terrorist organizations uh, with, um, you know, both rhetoric and actions targeted towards Indians, uh, United States, the West and Israel, of course. Um, so I think uh, from Israel's perspective, uh, I think from anyone's perspective, this would be deemed as not only an outrageous affront to the Indian people to see the Palestinian ambassador with this notorious terrorist, but I think particularly a great uh, massive uh, slap in the face to the Indian government and the Indian people, uh, especially in days just after the Indians voted with the Palestinians um, at the United Nations uh, on the Jerusalem vote. So perhaps uh, this may be time for the, uh, for the Indian government to rethink their policy, uh, um, which had been, I think, uh, tilted towards the Palestinians, but a lot more balanced in recent years under the growing relationship between uh, Modi and Netanyahu, but something that may be perhaps uh, rethought of uh, once again in light of this action, which, uh, as your evidence has also shown, it wasn't a, a careless uh, omission. Uh, the Palestinian ambassador knew very well who he was meeting with. Absolutely. Okay, let me go across to uh, my colleague Taha Siddiqui, Weon's Pakistan Bureau Chief. Uh, Taha, uh, for a number of observers in uh, India, there uh, have been many uh, allegations that Pakistan is attempting to mainstream extremist voices such as Hafiz Saeed. Um, do you think that this development on Friday, the fact that uh, this time it was an envoy of a different country that was meeting with him, only is adding to that uh, charge against Pakistan? Well, uh, as far as the mainstreaming of uh, these uh, groups is concerned, uh, that is a separate issue that uh, the military is involved in, and, and we've seen that uh, some generals have also, uh, you know, uh, voiced that uh, sort of plan uh, that was uh, that came under uh, sort of operation uh, under the last army chief. Uh, it was suggested and then uh, passed on to the civilian government, and then recently we've seen that you know these uh, political uh, these militant groups are now. Uh, coming up with uh, political parties, uh, not just Jamaat al Dawa, which is the Muslim League, uh, but then there is also Kerry Club Baghdad and Suri, which, is, which uh, they did not have any political presence before, and now they, they did that whole sit in in Islamabad. Uh, so, in that sense, uh, definitely there is uh, the mainstreaming of uh, these uh, uh, you know, militant groups ongoing. Uh, and um, in that regard, we're seeing that this is happening right before the elections, which are in six months or so. Right. Uh, as far as the envoy's, uh, you know, attendance there is concerned, uh, it also is uh, to do with the fact that, you know, uh, the, env uh, the envoy uh, was there uh, to sort of, you know, uh, be present for a Palestinian cause. And in Pakistan, a lot of Islamist groups and a lot of militant and uh, back groups are part of such, uh, you know, uh, uh, have been rallying for this cause of the Palestinians uh, ever since uh, you know, Trump administration and the movement of the embassy in Jerusalem. Right. And so this, you know, so this gives uh, sort of some oxygen to these Islamist groups, which basically in Pakistan, you know, they, most of the time they equate the whole uh, uh, Palestinian issue, the Kashmiri issue, and that is why we're seeing these Kashmiri militant uh, groups uh, now also trying to sort of garner that support from the Islamic Ummah, as it's called. Absolutely. And, and of course, it does raise uh, big question marks on the kind of research that was done uh, by Palestine's embassy itself on uh, allowing uh, someone as senior as the envoy to go ahead and attend this, even though it was uh, in the cause of uh, Palestine. Ray Locker, um, 
the United States was very categorical and when I say the US I'm referring to the President Donald Trump uh, about his position as far as all the countries who decided to vote against uh, the Jerusalem decision at the UNGA goes. Um, do you see this having some sort of impact on the relationship between India and the United States given that we've seen uh, more and more uh, strengthening of those ties ever since uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, has taken charge? I don't think it's going to have any effect on U.S.-Indian relations. Uh, the strength of the relationship between this country and India goes way beyond government, way beyond votes in the United Nations. It's strong. It's based on technology, industry, uh, finance. You know, it keeps getting stronger. You know, it's gotten definitely stronger since Prime Minister Modi's been in office, and it's only going to get stronger still. So I don't think uh, this president wants to jeopardize that over something that is relatively insignificant as the Jerusalem vote. All right, Ambassador Chakravarti, uh, as far as uh, you know, uh, developments that are uh, expected shortly, the Indian Prime Minister is supposed to visit Palestine. Do you think that visit is going to go ahead, but perhaps with a shadow hanging over it? Well, I don't think he's going to cancel the visit unless something uh, <clears throat> something untoward happens or <clears throat> some other gaffe is committed by some other Palestinian ambassador. But uh, but yes, I think uh, uh, I, I I would I would think that the Indian government would put this uh, put this aside now since uh, the action has been taken by the Palestinian government, and I don't think. Uh, uh, we would be, I think the government of India would be pressing uh, any further kind of action and uh, let it uh, and allow things to go back to normal. Fair enough. Uh, Taha Siddiqui, has this uh, generated any sort of chatter in Pakistan? Well, uh, in, uh, definitely. I mean, in Pakistan also it got uh, uh, a lot of coverage, especially given the fact that it was uh, one, of, one of the first time and un very unprecedented for a, a diplomat uh, to be present uh, amongst, uh, amongst, you know, these uh, sort of banned groups uh, and because of which, uh, you know, most of the Pakistani press covered that aspect of it. But then again, uh, you know, in the Pakistani press or in the Pakistani media, uh, the narrative about jamaat dawa is very much different from the international narrative or the Indian narrative. Uh, and, and the, you know, the Defy Pakistan Council is considered more of a political religious group rather than a religious militant group. Uh, so in that sense, the, the coverage here was, uh, we did see a lot of coverage, but in a, from, with a different angle uh, than the one that we see internationally or in India. Fair enough. Uh, let me go across to Arsen Ostrovsky on that. Arsen, uh, what was the view in Israel following uh, India's vote at the UNGA? Uh, look, I don't think there's any denying there was um, some sense of disappointment. Um, we look at our relationship uh, with India is very strong. Uh, certainly, Prime Minister Modi's visit to uh, Israel only um, earlier this year was really quite a historic visit. And we've seen the relationship really blossom uh, on many fields across trade, um, innovation, uh, all sorts of ties, including um, in terms of uh, voting at the UN and multilateral institutions, uh, whereas in the past, Palestinians perhaps had reflexively sided with Palestinians, uh, but in the last number of years, a number of important resolutions, uh, they've abstained. So I think there was some hope that uh, Indians uh, would abstain in this resolution. Um, I didn't, don't think it came as a huge surprise, uh, given some of their past positions uh, on the matter, um, but I don't think this will in any way derail uh, the blossoming Israel and Indian relations, which I would also note that uh, only in a number of weeks, the, the, is the Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu will be visiting uh, India, which will also be a very historic visit. But I think uh, this uh, action by the Palestinian ambassador to Pakistan might be perhaps somewhat of a wake-up call, uh, perhaps a sign showing that when one does stand uh, with the Palestinians, uh, this is the types of individuals like uh, Hafiz Saeed that one associates with uh, India and Israel, uh, natural allies, where both uh, democracies both share, you know, significant threat from Islamic terrorists. So I would uh, hope that uh, following this incident and uh, following the Prime Minister Netanyahu's uh, visit to India in the next couple of weeks in mid-January, uh, I would hope to see the relationship uh, strengthen even further. 
Ray Locker, uh, would it be fair to say, uh, given uh, the voices we've heard this evening, that uh, as, as much as uh, uh, Mr. Ostrovsky is saying that uh, this could ask or, or could uh, push or nudge India into reconsidering its, uh, its position as far as uh, Palestine goes, that all in all this is uh, perhaps just a blip in the relationship between India and uh, Palestine and uh, India by choosing to uh, you know, just ask for that apology and move on, uh, things are really going to go back to an even keel. I think that's right. I mean, I think it's a blip. First of all, if that ambassador to Pakistan didn't know who Hafiz Saeed was, then he's probably the dumbest person to ever be an ambassador. I mean, that's a pivotal part of, you know, the whole Pakistani political culture. Uh, he's been recalled. He probably will, probably should never be an ambassador to anywhere else again. Um, and I think both countries can kind of move on and, you know, reassess their relationship. As far as India and Israel are concerned, I mean, the same dynamic holds true for for them as with India and the United States. They have so many things in common that for this to, you know, cause a, a bigger rift, I think would be short-sighted. So I think when, you know, all is said and done, it's a blip, people are gonna move on and this person will probably never be seen or heard from again. Fair enough. Ambassador uh, Chakravarti, I'm sure you agree with that assessment. But uh, having said that, do you think this is going to rankle, uh, you know, the establishment, at least in Palestine, a little bit? Because uh, in, in uh, let's say, negotiating or asking for support f uh, globally for the Palestinian cause, um, it will also involve not reaching out to individuals or organizations that are uh, inimical to the interests of friendly countries such as India. I think there will be, um, I think, uh, rethinking in the Palestinian government as to, and they must be sending out uh, advisories to their ambassador that uh, this kind of action actually hurts uh, the Palestinian cause and causes friction with uh, friendly countries like India. And uh, apart from that, I would say that uh, I would agree with my co-panelists from Israel and the USA that uh, this is just a blip and uh, I don't think that this is going to affect uh, very much the course of things, uh, particularly relations with uh, India's relations with the USA and Israel. And let me say that uh, I think the government of India is quite determined to carry those relationships forward to greater heights and uh, it would be certainly unthinkable that this kind of a situation uh, would would uh, would kind of undermine uh, this this growing and a very important strategic relationship both with USA and Israel